There we go, ladies and gentlemen, we are live on the King Dames podcast, and today I have with me from the BKFC, Tommy Stridham. Tommy the Farmer, how are you? <laughs> Always good and blessed, thank you. Thank you for having me, sir. I appreciate it a lot. Okay, okay, I'm happy to have you on board today. And of course, you know, something that really, really stands out for me, you know, for you is your positive energy your positive vibe and you seem to be a man of faith right because my interactions right. with you my interactions with you even leading up to you know uh, sh- uh, scheduling this podcast right you always end everything you say with god bless god bless you and i was like okay i was like okay this is a matter <laughs> of faith right you know but the first question i like to ask people on the podcast is you know what was their childhood like you know what was childhood like growing up for you what was what like sir your childhood like how how, how was your childhood childhood i had a great childhood um Place to still be here, naughty as hell, but uh, <laughs> everything changed as it is. And uh, yes, everything I was a busy, with I was age. A busy boy. Um, mom and dad and everything, they always tried to get me extra sport, extra activities because I never energy. sat down. <laughs> Too much energy. Too much energy. But Why it seems that you're getting... It seems as you're getting older, the energy level goes more down. You've got to keep yes, it up yourself. It, yes, <laughs> it goes down. <laughs> but but the thing is, you know, um, even as it goes down, you need to you need to maintain your your body, right? You need to take care of your body as you grow older. Yes, and of course, exercise exercise does help. And of course, I think you guys are blessed because uh, you guys are into sports, right? The the, the nature yes, of the kind of work that you do pushes you to keep your body in shape. How how old are you now? Thirty eight. Thirty eight. Yeah, and but you don't, are... say, don't say that hard. I feel twenty eight wow. without tax. Wow. Tax is ten percent. <laughs> wow, are you still a cardio king? Because you you're on the bike right now, and of course it looks like you're gonna be on the bike shoot out the podcast. And I'm like, wow, like I, I I I sometimes when I get to the gym, I know I know I'm not the same thing. I'm 32 right now, right? But I know I'm not the same thing as when I was 25, 26, you know. <laughs> yeah. I hear it's, you. I hear you. We gotta keep the fitness up. That's all that matters. Uh, but, but one annoying thing with fitness is this, right? Um, you, you go to the gym for a week, you feel good, right? But if you get to stop the routine for a while, you lose the fitness. And it's difficult to get um, back again. So when I start prepping for my sport, uh, it's a straight two-month-on thing for me. And usually... Somewhere in between, you take about five days complete rest, which is good for your system and your body to recover. Okay. But I'm not saying the other thing is after that five days, as you go back into training, you feel tired and you feel as if as if you're struggling. It it feels like you have to start all over again, but it isn't actually like that. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's the thing I, I that's the thing I don't like, you know. You know, um, I, I, <laughs> at some point I used to do about ten kilometers, right? You know, I started gradually with two kilometers, three kilometers, push it up five kilometers, right? And then I started doing ten kilometers and more in a day. But then there was a time I just stopped. But doing five kilometers felt like heavy work to me. I was like, wow. <laughs> it is like that. It happens. It is. But it's all a mind game. It's a muscle memory comes back very quickly within a week, two weeks. It depends on person to person and your fitness levels and yes. your body. So it always it depends. It just depends on, on if you were an active person or, or not really. Oh, I see. I see. So, so nowadays I try, I just try to do five kilometers at least a day. So, and I keep the activity. That's good. <laughs> on check. That's, good. That's better than me. Oh, no, don't say that. <laughs> uh, anyways, we, we, we're, we're all fighters, you know, I don't get into the cage, but then I'm a fighter in life. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Go, going back to your childhood, like, who were your heroes? Who were your influencers? Who are those people you looked up to? So, dad was my hero. And um, otherwise, then, parent, if it's parents wise, dad was my hero. And mom is the strong one. Mm. She's out. Um, I look very up to her. She's the strong one that makes things happen. Dad was always there for my for my sport since I was six years old. Always wow. on my right shoulder. And then when it comes down to when you're talking about you looking up to someone in sports wise, like uh, what do you call it, your favorite boxer or so was always Manny Pacquiao for money. For, not just a, yeah. For the Philippines. So, <laughs> here we go. Not just the fact that the, about the boxing, but He's uh, very religious, and he's got big beliefs. And what he does for his people with whatever he wins is not about him. It's about the people around him. He's giving a lot, and that's that's amazing. That's what I love about him. Oh wow, wow! He he's somebody that you know. Um, people, he's he's a good role model. Let let me put it that way. Yeah, and of course, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people look up to him. Yeah, and of course he got involved in politics in in his country as well. You know, he's always yeah, looking for, for sure. a way to give back to his people. But looking into that Mayweather fight, <laughs> yeah, he lost. Uh, like... I don't even I don't even want to go there because I still oh. believe in my heart he never lost that fight. But you know what? Everybody's got their own beliefs. So uh, yes, it is what it is. I always say I always say you know what happened to me with one of my fights back in EFC. I lost the fight by point decision, oh. and as I got out of the out of the cage, uh, there was an old man sitting there coming up to me that I don't know from anywhere, and he told me, "You keep your head up, high, son. Mm-hmm. You walk out here as if you're the champion. It was your fight." And the only mm-hmm. thing I could tell him that at that very moment is, "You know what, sir." I hear what you say, but God has bigger plans, and check where I am today. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> everything wow. happens for a reason. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. You know, it's, it's, it's quite interesting how, how sometimes in life as human beings, we want something so badly, but God wants another thing for you, right? And then God is just, you know, giving you a build up into his own plan for you. But when... Yeah. The- Things don't work out for you in the moment. It doesn't make sense to you. It doesn't make sense to you at that very point, that very moment, because you want it so bad. But that's why you say it's all on God's time, not yours. Hmm. So So, it's 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 all in God's time. That's it. Wow, fantastic, fantastic. I, I love I love the fact that you are a man of faith. You grew up in South Africa, right? You you mentioned yeah. about the EFC. Oh wow, interesting. And of course, Africans, Vulcan Africans Prat. Africans <laughs> Oh wow. <laughs> and of course, you know, you just talked about the EFC. Speaking of the EFC, the greatest product from the EFC, Tricus Duplessis goes to war. Oh. Uh, this Saturday against my boy, Ijo Adesanya. <laughs> this is going to be very interesting. He's actually... So I trained back at uh, CIT. Oh, wow. Um, Did you train at CIT? Interesting. Yeah, at, uh, they bad you in him. So Vusi, Vusi uh, trained me with my boxing while I go back home for three three months out of a year. Then I go train there. So... I became part of the friends and the family of Drikas and everybody that side and more life for so, and everybody. So I've got much respect for him and I know that he's going to do it this weekend. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, so, is, that is me versus you. My money is on my boy. Yeah. I decide, yeah. So let's have a bet. Let's have a bet. If Drikas wins, you give me a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> well, let's see how that goes. That's that's a. That's but when my boy wins, I, I'll give you a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars is that some dollars or US? <laughs> ah, ah, no, 
I've got, I've got, I've got some of my really, really best set of people from Zimbabwe. Do, do not, no slander against Zimbabwe is allowed. <laughs> no slander uh, against always, Zimbabwe. <laughs> we as, as South Africans and and Afrikaans people as well, we always make jokes, and then your friends are like, "Yeah, but you, you earn in dollars now because you work in America," and it's like, "Yeah." If you just it's, knew it is them dollars, then Zim. you wouldn't be my friend. No, 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 let's not, let's not, let's not go there. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the first time I'm a Zimbabwean. <laughs> and of course, my best friend is also from Zimbabwe, so do not let us, those, those, those Zim slander is allowed. <laughs> only, only jokes, guys, only jokes. Uh, they're going to they're, they're, they're gonna come for you. They're going to come for you in the that's, comment section. And you better be prepared <laughs> to answer, to answer for the Zim dollars. Okay, so anyways, I'm not, I'm not sending you Zim dollars. I'm sending you US dollars. <laughs> US dollars. US dollars, there we go. But for, for me, I'm riding, I'm riding with my boy Adesanya. I, th I think he gets it done. But regardless, you know, it's a battle yeah, of Africa. Um, I think he's very hungry. Yeah. You know, that's that's why... For me, you know, I'm backing my boy's family, his brother, it's, it's everything mm -hmm. like that. Exactly. And in my heart, I know it ain't going to be easy because, you it's know. Not, it's not going to be easy for both of them. Now from a background, he's very hungry. Understand? Mm -hmm. He's got that. He's got something to prove. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, but this is Styles makes fights, right? So looking at Addison's style versus Drikas' style. So how do you think the styles clash? And what's the pathway to think, victory for both fighters? So uh, to be honest, Adesanya is gonna gonna run this fight stand up. I can basically guarantee you that. He's a he's one of the best stand up fighters in the world, like you know striking, stand-up striking and everything, clean shots, clean kicks, everything. And on the other part. side, Drakers again, he's, he's, he's got a great ground game as well. He's very strong. So yeah, it's very strong and I unorthodox. Think, I think orthodox, and I think the big thing is, is trying to close gap, getting in there and taking out Sanya to get to the ground. But... Adesanya's ground defense ain't that bad as well, but yes, you know, there's two things. One is a great stand-up fighter, and the other one is a great Jets ground wrestler. Yeah, he's a great grappler. That is strong. <laughs> so it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, really. Well, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this one. You know, just before, just before we jumped on this podcast, right? There's this guy. He's he's Nigerian like me, right? He just texted me and he was like, "Oh, brother, I have been feeling sick since Monday. I hope your boy is not going to disappoint us because you know, on the African Fighters podcast, they call me the president of Israel Adesanya Fans <laughs> Association. So nobody oh, supports yeah, 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 Israel right. more than me." <laughs> So oh, like, it, it's crazy. People, people keep texting me. I'm like, are you sure Adesanya is not going to lose? I'm like, oh, I've got my money. I've got my money on him, right? So, yeah. but then you know, both fighters are fantastic guys. You know, great styles. You know, um, they are elite level, elite level. You know, mixed martial artists, right? So, yeah. may, the, may the best man win. <laughs> let's let, let's leave it like that. Let the best man win, sir. Let's make the best <laughs> man win. Uh, interesting. Nigeria versus South Africa. Let's see how that comes out. You know, this is MMA, and you know, there's this sporting rivalry. You know, um, South Africa are good with rugby. Um, Nigeria is good with you know football. Um, the last football, was yeah. It, yeah, was it earlier in the year? Uh, South Africa did win the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, that was last year. What was it last year? Uh, I think I'm it was early, early, uh, yeah, yeah, earlier was, this uh, year. It was earlier this year. Because I know I bought yeah, the, the, the jersey, yeah, right, the Springboks. Right, right. Yeah, the Springboks jersey. I'm just yeah. Uh, I should have won. I should have won the Springboks jersey for this interview. You know, I was supporting the rugby team. You know, like my South African friends got me involved in you know the whole thing. It was a really really big thing. I think you guys beat um Netherlands in the final. 
Yes. In the final New Zealand. Sorry, it's New Zealand, New Zealand, brother. Yeah. N and N, yeah, New Zealand, yeah. You guys did beat New Zealand in the fi- in the finals, and it was. Yeah, that was really... big. That's that was history repeating itself for back in oh. 1995. So. That oh. Was great. Oh wow! Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Now you call yourself Tommy the Farmer, and of course, in the build up to you know scheduling this podcast, you were telling me about how you know we couldn't do it later in the day because you're going to be on the farm. Tell us about Tommy the Farmer. <laughs> so, uh, the name actually started at BKFC. So they had a fight here in uh, America. So. After that passed away two years ago, All right. decided to fight for Jesus and to fight for my dad. They saw rest in peace. Family. And I went back into the sport. I did a MMA fights up in Lincoln. And then I got two bad elbows to the head. So I'd opened my head right here in the middle. And there was blood everywhere. And... The guys had to stop the fights. There was so the cut was just too big. So that was fine. You know, I took it as a man. I lost the fight. Everybody's like, you didn't lose, you know, if you could have gone on. I was like, you know what? The guy threw the punches. What happened, happened. Don't be a bad loser. Take it as a man. Take it on the chin. And then BKFC saw me, and then they offered me a contract to fight at them. And that's, I said, I'm on. I'm in. Take me. Here I am. Let's go. Fantastic. uh, They asked me, so what's your nickname? Your fighting name? I'm like, I'm Tommy Stradon. That's who I am. (laughs) They're like, but don't you have like a fighting name? I'm like, no, I'm not one of those guys that gives myself a name. If you get a name, it has to be earned. Yes. I I just... That, got that so I much believe. more meaning. It's got so much more meaning to the name than just giving yourself a name. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people go quickly for hardcore names. You know, um, always something with a gun or killing or something. You know, so <laughs> I've oh, 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 been a bad guy, being an assassin. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've exactly. been a superhero. There's always something that's 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 aggressive there, and. And they said, you know, Tommy, what, what do you do for a living? What do you do? I was like, no, oh, I farm. And I like, well, let us tell you what. Can we call you the farmer? The farmer. Tommy, the yeah. farmer. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? That's on you. If you that's want to cool. call it Tommy, the farmer, that's something at least I earned and something that that our organization gave me, not something that I just named myself. And oh, I was hundred wow. percent with it, and now we run with the name Tommy the Farmer. And then you know, I, I think it's cool. I think it's cool because it's unique. It's different. You know, it, it just makes you uh, separate from the crowd. <laughs> it's like a unique yeah, identifier. I think different, different from the crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the people always say they love me because I bring so much, so much energy, and I'm always friendly and stuff like that because a lot of fighters out there not uh, not saying anybody bad but um i don't know if it's the focus or it's just sometimes the attitude or whatever but you know what i live for one word in my life that's called you're as good as anyone else that walks on this earth Mm. i'm no better than you you know better than me so let's all smile and wave and enjoy life because you are not promised for tomorrow you don't know if you're exactly. going to be here tomorrow. Exactly. You know, to 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 be alive is a privilege. Is a privilege okay. and not a right, right? And we yeah. always need to treat it that way. So be thankful, be grateful, and of course, be graceful. Yes, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it tells of this life. You know, for, do you have kids? No, I've got a boy, eleven years old, back in South Africa. Uh, oh, wow. He lives with his mom up in Cape Town. Um, I'm divorced. Oh. It's been a long time already, so that's good. Um, life goes on. I've got a beautiful, beautiful lady now. And, <laughs> yeah, we got, there's plans. There's plans. I'm not allowed to say anything because otherwise I'll spill it out. I can't keep secrets. 
<laughs> Tell us the secrets. So it's no longer a secret. <laughs> Yeah, so, you're not allowed to keep secrets bro <laughs> yeah that's the bad thing with me is keeping secrets so you you can a few words and then i'm like oh shame let me just tell you and okay. i just give the secret away i can't i can't, I can't give see well not secret surprises surprises oh, that i see i see yeah surprises. that's true there are some people you can never plan a surprise with uh, it's very, very annoying. <laughs> like, it's just like, if you plan something and you plan it for, like, I'm only going to be by, like, within the next three, three and a half months because she's over back in South Africa. I'm here in the U.S. Okay. So that's the hard part, but that's, that makes us building, building love for each other mm. stronger by seeing that you can wait for each other. So mm. I'll send speak to the hot girl from the... <laughs> so somebody's getting married soon. Interested. You heard it first on the Kingdoms podcast. Tell me <laughs> the farmer is about to harvest a crop from South Africa. <laughs> that's a crop. That is great. That is so great. You see... <laughs> Vulcan Africans, Pratt. There we go. There we go. I'm a South African by association, man. <laughs> you know, uh, I've, I've got friends that are Africans, Glossa, Zulu, Ndebele, um, Venda. You know, I've got, you know, friends from all over South Africa, my brother. Uh, that's great. That's great. Well, it's, a, it's a great country, you know. That's. There's so there's some a lot of cultures out there and people are so so awesome, and it's a friendly country. People over in America and some other countries don't understand our, our like uh, you know the, the the type of people who are always friendly, making jokes, and you know we are fun people to be around with. Exactly. So um, for them, it's for them, it's for them, it's a new thing. It's not in America. It's not everybody is like is like that. Mm-hmm. So, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just around me that they're not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't think you're wrong, right? I'm from Nigeria. I moved to um, the United Kingdom. You know, I live in London. Moved not too long ago 2022 right but then i discovered that they're like you know culture shocks their cultural differences right in nigeria people make jokes you know people speak directly but oh, yeah. over here in the west people tend to be very oh, sensitive yes. yeah very, yes. very sensitive you know if you make a joke a joke can easily be you know considered inappropriate and then you're like oh i was just joking you know when you say certain things people think that you're rude but then, you know, yeah. back home, you know, it's just, you know, you making jokes, right? So I have been able to relate to South Africans, right? right? And then I've been able to have a like, good rapport with them because there are similarities between, you know, the Nigerian culture and the South African culture. You guys love to have a good time. You guys love to, exactly. you know, make jokes, you know, be around your family, be around friends, right? But, you know, in the West, people just want to be alone, just want to focus on their lives. Right. So it's a different it's a different angle. So when they see that, you know, you like being around, you know, family, friends, often they they see differently. Right. But, you know, um, I think one thing that really hits me more is the aspect of the banter, you know, the jokes. They consider our jokes, you know, inappropriate. But when yeah, Nigerians and South too, yeah. <laughs> when Nigerians and South Africans sit down together, right? You know, they have a good time. But one thing that hits me a lot about South Africans is the tendency of a lot of South Africans to consume alcohol. Wow, you guys are I rate you guys are really, really <laughs> high. You guys are high up there. South Africa and Zim. Whoa, you're the best in Africa. Like I I've never seen any other Africans that can consume alcohol like South Africans and Zimbabweans. Like you guys are the That's greatest, nice. man. <laughs> Whoa. And of course the bride, the bride. You guys like, you know, uh um, yeah. We the don't bride, the groove. Huh? We don't barbecue, we bra. Yeah, you bra. You see? <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> you guys like to groove. And uh, let me see, let me see, let me see what, what else I can remember from, you know, you guys. The food, the food. Uh, you guys eat pop a lot. Yeah, we love pop, yes. But what, 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 what's up with the pop, man? I don't know. We just uh, enjoy it. It's it's not, and you, just, uh, you can do quite a lot with it. So yeah, it's like mix mix it mix it up with like different different kinds of sources or different eat it kinds with anything. of sources and stuff like that. That's correct. And interestingly, uh, right? Like that, <laughs> they call pop and place. Uh, your pop your pop actually goes with you know Nigerian food as well. The Nigerian soups, you know. You, you can eat the pop with Nigerian food, and it's it's quite interesting. And we don't have it here. We don't have it here. So really, really. Yeah, yeah. And so that we we I actually buy. I can I actually buy it from a, a app that's called uh, uh, African Hut. So oh. whatever whatever I want that's South African food, I can buy from that app, and they send it to me. Oh wow, wow! Yeah. But 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 here in London, you know, there are African shops, you know, littered around everywhere. I just walk in. Yes, yes, my maze, yes, my maze meal. Is in uh, uh, where's it at? Where's it at? I don't want to lie to you. In uh, Florida, Florida, Miami. Okay. Exactly like your shirt. Oh uh, yeah, you know, it's one of the guys in the BKFC. <laughs> Oh, That's okay. Bam Bam. That? <laughs> Bam Bam, Sean Hutchison. Oh, okay, yes, he's, yes. He's my boy. He was on so, the podcast. <laughs> okay, yes. So, so there's actually like a South African bar in Florida. Oh, so wow. That's where they watch the, the Rugby World Cup and everything. So we are, we are actually going to inform them now about our thoughts. And then um, they can uh, view, everybody can view it there. So, oh, yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna see how that goes. Oh wow, interesting. I think for me, like when it comes to South African food, I like the potato salad. Then let me see what potato else. Salad, what... Right. Yes. Um. Then your your braai, right? I like that. Then there's and there, there's another salad. Um. I don't know if it's the cluster people that do that do that. Uh. I'm trying to remember the the name. Uh, it's. Salad. Or anything, I don't know. Uh, shakalaka, yes. I can't say now, isn't it a, a, like a potato bake? But so that's not a salad. Oh, so so no, chakalaka is like. Oh, you, oh, you, you probably. I think it's a class of people that that eat chakalaka. It's 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 quite nice, you know, especially when you make it spicy as well. I love, I love achar again, achar, uh, mango achar. So if I get my hands on that. It's <laughs> it's good. It's, it's good bad. night. It's good yeah, night. It's but, good. <laughs> but one thing with the pop is this, right? Anytime you, I eat pop, or I think most people that I know, right, you get to feel sleepy. Especially when you eat. Food. Especially when you eat a lot. Of, <laughs> there you go. There you go. If you eat a I lot of pop. If you eat a lot of pop, it's good night. <laughs> but the thing is that that's that's very very uh, heavy on the stomach and on the body, yes. so that's that's not making you tired. And yeah, it's not just a light food that that can uh, um, run through your system like quick as possible. It stays for a while. Oh, there, there you go. I don't have the right <laughs> words. I've got the Afrikaans words, but I don't have the English words for that. Okay, Vulcan Afrikaans Prat. Give me the Afrikaans <laughs> word, you know. So, <laughs> guys, we... so let's all say, Pap Vertier Niso Pannach. She is on her fourth name. It makes you, it makes you feel heavy, <laughs> does it? It makes you feel heavy. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Interested, interested. South Africa. But what was it like growing up in South Africa? You know, um, different people have different experiences. What, what city did you? Which of the provinces did you grow up in? Well, there's a lot of experiences out there. Um, where I'm from, I was born up in KwaZulu Natal in Durban, but moved back to Johannesburg side. Or Joburg. And uh, well, that was even when I was like four years old. So, you know, that's years and years ago. I was still 
but I'll baby that time. Okay. And uh, I must say, making friends, people are friendly, but as 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 you grow up, life changes. You know, people start becoming different. I yes. Can't, I can't. I don't. I don't want to say rude and everything, and, and you know, take people <laughs> in their places, but. People, people become different. They different people from what they were back in childhood. Exactly, very, but, very true. But you know, if I if I had to be reborn again, I will be a South African again. Uh, that 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 that's a great one. That's very yeah. very beautiful to hear. You know, South Africa is a lovely country. Lots of different people you know, fantastic people. And of course, you know, you guys are, you guys are strong in terms of, you know, that diversity, but you still have that unity. And of course, you know, where sports comes into the mix, right? That is where you see that yeah, South big, African spirit. <laughs> you guys are very, very big on sports. <laughs> yeah, well, it's actually funny how such small country can be so good in sport out there. But the same with like New Zealand. It's a very small country. I, I uh, will not I will not agree with you if you call South Africa small. I will not agree with you. South Africa is in no way a small country. Come on. <laughs> no, if if you, you take South Africa and then you take something like America. Take South uh, no, Africa and you America take something is in like world of its own. Or take China, take Japan. That's huge countries. It's big. Those places. guys are outliers. Those guys are outliers. Just leave, 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 leave them alone. They're in a world of their own. You know, where we take yeah, the this, world as a whole. This is about you know? this is about us, not about them. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and of course, when you take the world as a as a whole, you know, like we we are quite big. Nigeria, South Africa, we're pretty much the biggest countries in in Africa. When you think about it. Yeah. So. Right. In our continent, we are the biggest, so we cannot be considered a small. <laughs> so in no way can <laughs> you know. Uh, you're actually right. I need to apologize for that because I hate it when people tell me, "Oh, you so small." I'm 1.71. Just don't forget that last one. Ah, the one counts. The one does count. Interested, you know, like when David Feldman was on this podcast, you know, he told me something. He said he is in the business of transforming the lives of people, right? That he changes the lives of people. And he's also in the business of selling holy shit moments, right? Now, think, thinking of, you know, the transformation of lives, you talked about, you know, your time in the EFC and then you oh, ended up in the BKFC. Would you say that the BKFC, you know, transformed your life? One and two, like what was the build up of your transition from MMA into being in the BKFC? I say, I think it did. I believe it did. Because um, mm. not just the fact that, you know, EFC used to be big, but it's not being hosted at any big, um, how can I say, uh, arenas uh, again? Uh, Arenas no more. It's oh, they're, they're using a, they're using their PI or something right now. The, 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 what's it called? A professional? Well, no, it's a personal institute. institute or, yeah, performance yeah, institute. institute. Everything has been held there, and, and yeah. like I told you, I think them, that was a COVID effect. That, like, the, my yeah. big thing is that people don't fighters don't get that exposure no more because you know. Um, being at the arena and you got five, ten, whatever thousand people around you, that's called exposure. Mm. Being in the institute and there's one thousand people, but most of them are actually the fighters that also fight there because they get free tickets and stuff like that. Where is the exposure? Mm. And you don't get to interact with people out, outside of of the institute really you know you get you get so many people that they believe you are their idol they will just want to see you greet you i want to have a photo with you your signature or whatever you know because you build that little child's love you know he, yeah. he looks up to you and and there's not that no more really mm. they, see they, they, see they, they see they see their fans on tv and that's where they see them there's no arenas so there's no exposure mm. I think that, that so, that's a big thing. Yes, he has to be correct. On the other side with BKFC, 
with VKFC when I started here, obviously, like I said, I ran back into the fighting for, for my Lord Jesus Christ and then my dad and my family and and, that. and um, look at me, two years later, going my third year, fighting now that um, I don't know how to call names yet. I probably have contract today, but fighting on the 13th and that will that can be on the number one contender in the world. So, wow, wow, that's, just that's, just that's, 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 that's the switch, flipping the switch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is just wow, you know. That that is a big transformation, you know, you know, transforming from the EFC and you know, the BKFC is the fastest growing combat sports organization in the world right now that's true that's true so i was planned um to say something i'm gonna say it on your podcast but like i wanted to say and what i want to tell them as well once once i once i i win on this next fight i want to tell them to give me the champion and uh if it's not a champion, it's meant to have one more fight. Before that, it's no problem. But I want to go a deal on with them, telling them that once I beat the next fight, I beat the champion, I take the title, give me the opportunity to take BKFC to South Africa. Fantastic. Yeah, you know, BKFC Africa has, has started. I think, yeah. It's gone. It started and then it's gone. Wow. So I don't know what the reasons is. We'll never know the real story because, you know, too many mm. people, too many stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I, from my perspective, I, I think too many middlemen involved because if, oh, yes. if, if I listen to purses that people got to, well, they, what they offer them to pay them for the for fighting is like insane. It doesn't mean anything. You know, it's the same as the EFC. That's, there's not really there's not really anything you can't do shit with it mm. if you pick up cuts and you go to the hospital that's that's taking your whole purse mm. that's that, that that's that, that that's not a good that's not a good one right yeah, and you know africa, africa is opening up and you're, in, you're an entertainer and you know obviously you're getting paid for what you do you're entertaining people are you putting a lot on the line? You're putting your body on the line. You're putting your life on the line. You're putting your life on the line. That's great. And so, when they get offered, you need to like, be rewarded for it. I'm going to be honest. They got offered like 4,000 Rand and stuff like that. How do, how do you pay someone 4,000 Rand to go into a bare knuckle fight? That, that's that, that's not good. That, that's no, just no. nuts. <laughs> and I think the middlemen are a very, very big problem. Even in boxing, right? <laughs> the middle men are a very big problem. And, you know, in boxing recently, it was you know, Turkey al Sheikh of Saudi Arabia that has been saving the sport in recent time. Like, yeah. they are not letting the sport to move forward. And that, that is not a good thing. Even UFC have not been able to, you know, penetrate Africa as well. Or the PFL I are think, organizing something. I think once, if Drikas uh, retains his title this weekend, I can see UFC coming to South Africa. Mm. But that's going to be hard work. Yes, it's going to be serious hard work. And I know Drikas is quite um, passionate about South Africa and representing oh, yes. South Africa. Yes. So uh, the, I think the point at which I knew that Drikas is very, very, you know, um, passionate about South Africa, South Africa was when he declined to be on the UFC 300 card because he could have yeah. he could have made the biggest payday you know of his lifetime from UFC 300. UFC 300 was a marquee card, right? But then he wasn't you know um, very much healed up, right? Oh. Uh, but the thing is, sometimes when you're chasing legacy, you say no to money. That's true. And exactly that is what he, I saw him do. And he earned my respect with that. You know, if you're, chasing, leg, if you're chasing legacy, 
you need to have the discipline to be able to say no to money because that sometimes money can rob you. No, money can't take you anywhere. And the big thing is uh, people run for, for, for money so fast that as quick as they build themselves, that's how quick they fall and, they, and then it's costing them their, how can I say, their whole career. That's mm. like a career stopper. Mm. So mm. instead of focusing, thinking what you want, what you do, and you can build a huge thing at the end, but some people want to fight the champion right now, tomorrow. They, they can't wait. They don't want to, they, they don't want to wait. So it's like I said, it's for them, it's not, it's not on the Lord's time, it's on their time, and that's the wrong way to go. Mm. So with what you said now, I want to ask you, what are your philosophies? Like, what are the philosophies you think are responsible for your own success in life? Because you seem to be, you know, or not a religious man, but a godly man, right? And you seem also to be a spiritual person and a disciplined person. So I would love, you know, to pick your brain on, you know, the philosophies you think are responsible for your success and your advice to young people, young up and coming people, young athletes and, you know, young people in general, you know, on how to navigate. Yeah, so at the end is, is I believe that you, you know, you, you were created, you were born, and every single one of us was born with the talents in life. And to, for me, I'm a very religious person. For me to show and to, to uh, praise and worship my Lord is yeah. also through the talents he gave me. So I need to make use of that. And push myself as far as I can to show him the thank you for what he gave me mm. instead of just throwing it out there and just leave it. And that's why a lot of people don't as well, not being ugly about it, but don't achieve because there's so many people with so many talents, but they don't make use of it. Mm. Very important. Not never to be a waste of talent. And it, it reminds you of the, of the parable the of the talent talents in the Bible. Remember the parable yeah. of talents. <laughs> you know, uh, the master gave some five. One guy five. He gave the other guy two, and he gave the other the last one one. The one with the one talents went to bury his talent and did not use it, and he exactly. was rebuked. Hundred hmm. percent. Hmm. So very important to use the talent that you're given in life, and be grateful for that talent. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. Be grateful for the talents and, and you got to move forward from there, you know. Arrogancy and stuff like that ain't going to bring you anywhere, you know. Mm. I'm, I'm different than, um, I, like the BKFC said, is what I like about me is I bring a different vibe to the sport. Instead of being this cocky, arrogant guy, mm. I'm the friendly one and the more religious one. Not that I'm saying the other people aren't, but there's not really many saying anything about. So I'm just honest, I'm straightforward. I don't need to be I say a spade is a spade. I don't come with around corners and stuff like that. What you see is what you get. Mm. Interesting. You know, or uh, one thing I appreciate about a person like yourself is that you are comfortable with being different. You know, a lot of people in this age and time want to be like the Joneses. They want to follow the crowd. You know, there's this crowd mentality. You they know, want to impress hopping, people. That's yeah, what hopping on do. the bandwagon. They want to be like the rest. They don't want to be themselves. They don't want to be different. Be don't, like, here's, a, here's a good thing. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, that's one of my management now. Remember, he, he had his way of, of making him what he is today. That's his way. That worked for him. Yes. And I've got much respect for that. Mm -hmm. But now every single guy wants to be a Conor McGregor and think they can say and do whatever they want to. Uh, it doesn't work yeah, for everybody. It doesn't work. Because, you know, he's just that 
There's only one Conor McGregor that is like that, and that's him. Exactly. You can't, can't try be... and be, that, that, that's <laughs> where it comes down to. You can't try and be someone that you are, but that you aren't. Be yourself. Mm. Mm. Just be yourself. Like you, you, the, uh, every other person is taken. But a lot of people do not see that way. They want to be like other people because everybody drives a Range Rover. You want to drive a Range Rover because every other person drives, you know, a Mercedes or something. You also. Don't give me a car. Give me a Bucky and I'm happy. Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Wow. So, like, in terms of the, the, the BKFC, right, like, who are the figures within the BKFC that you, you I would say, you appreciate? Like, who are those guys within the BKFC that you would say you appreciate? That I appreciate? Yes. Fighter-wise or anybody in the BKFC, basically? A any, anybody within the BKFC, because, you know, I, I was thinking of, you know, like, putting you on the spot and say, okay, um, BKFC personalities, right? And like, what do you think about like these people? So someone like David There's Shulman, one guy right? there, very religious, very straightforward. He's uh, he was supposed to fight now at Sturgis and that didn't happen because his fights was, I don't know what happened, locked up or something. I don't know the story, so I can't say, say nothing about it. But Michael Lamo. Oh, he's wow. a he's a genuine genuine freaking dude. He's always res respectful when he when we chat over the phone and stuff like that. We send each other messages. We fight in the same category, always oh, wow. one weight above me, but a genuine guy. And oh. you know, I, I like when I meet someone. Be genuine. Don't be fake. And exactly. I must say. He's, he's a great guy. Then Robert Duran was a good guy. Spoke to him a bit as well. He lost his last uh, fight against uh, Kai Stewart. That's the champion. So that was a title fight. Kai Stewart, oh, ain't, a, Kai Stewart. Kai Stewart, Kai Stewart ain't a bad guy as well. Yeah, I, 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 I've chatted with know, Kai Stewart before as well. He, he's quite, yeah. you know, very real, very real guy. And I, I like so that. All of them, all of them as uh, actually... Uh, uh, Common sits on on some of my stuff saying, yeah, uh, I would be a fun fight and, and everything. And I was like, I'm glad you think it's fun because this boy doesn't give up. That's the big thing about now. They just don't give up. And I don't know what, three and zero, uh, two knockouts. And that one was on points. We're going now on our fourth fight. And... Uh, I don't see this going far. I, I, I see this. It can go five rounds. It cannot go five rounds, but I can guarantee you at the end, with the Lord on my side, anything and everything is possible. Uh, amen. Amen. So I'm going to put you on the sport now, like, I'm going to say, um, I'll yeah. give you 10 names in the BKFC, right? And tell me the first word that comes to your mind. So, for example, if I said, um, if so, I said, I just want to let you know. I don't know all of their names, so I just need to let you know. So if you give me names, I'll remember I, I, some I, of them, I, I'll, not give everyone. You, I'll give you I'll give, I'll give you the popular guys. <laughs> I'll give you the popular okay. guys. So let's, if let's I said David Feldman, David Feldman, for example, maybe the word that comes to your head is leader or boss awesome. or something. Yeah. Awesome uh -huh. leader, so, yeah. Okay, so That's awesome it. is what comes is is what comes to your to your mind, right? Yeah. Okay, let me let me give you some other names. Uh, let's let me see what comes to your mind. Okay, Lorenzo Hunt. Lorenzo, isn't he fighting now? Yeah, I'm that's that's, about... that's he's, a, he's, he's the champion. Yes, yes, uh, he was the one who challenged. The... Seems like a nice guy. Um, nice guy. Met him, he seems like a nice person, you know. Um, not like an arrogant, arrogant type of person. Yeah, but he's always putting up that show, you know, to make bring eyes to the <laughs> to the sport. Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe we're talking about the wrong guy. I don't know. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but now, about, yeah, let's about, leave that one. You remember? Up. Okay, you remember Mike Perry? Yeah, Mike Perry. Uh, not much time. 
Uh, okay, so so what what word comes to your yeah, mind? Right? Here's my word: bigger than the sports. There we go. Whoa! <laughs> How about the girls? Uh, let, let let's talk about a few of the girls. Let me come like, up with maybe. The girls are, I don't know the girl. I don't know the girls fighting. I don't ah, know their name. Oh really? Did you know Paige nah. Paige Van Zan, the former uh, UFC girl? Remember, I fight for I fight all my life. I get a lot of punches. If I don't get to deal with you all the time, I don't remember your name always. Uh, <laughs> uh, do, do you know do, do you know Luis Palomino, the, the lightweight yeah. champion? Yeah, I think uh, you see, if, you, if, you, if you give me pictures and I see them, then I'll know you talk about. I don't know their names. That's oh, a big thing. I see, I yeah. see. I, mean, I, I see. need, I need the face in front of the name, and then I'll be like, oh yeah, I, I know this guy. I remember, I've, I've watched his fights. But <laughs> like I said, if I, if I don't talk about you all, every day or with you every day, then I don't, I won't always remember your name. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I get that. I get that. But but uh, at least you've talked about the guys that. That's a bit more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you have talked about the guys that you like, you know, in 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 the BKFC. So MMA, BKFC. A lot of um MMA guys get a transition into uh the BKFC, and I think like the BKFC. What, what what do you think about the BKFC in like the next couple of years? Let's so, say the next five I years. I want to say there's there's some of the MMA guys and the UFC guys. Uh, Jimmy yes. Rivera, he's uh, from UFC back in the day. Mm-hmm. He's at BKFC. Yes, even Mike Perry as well. Well, I think I feel in my heart something is unfair there, like. They've been at the UFC coming down to BKFC. They get they get big paydays, <laughs> and, and and you know sometimes the performances ain't that good, but they get they get paid for performances that's not worth it. Yeah, so so there's some people out there that can really perform. So you know you gotta you gotta these days you gotta use the best. Don't use the guy you just like and the name. Yeah, it's it's the name, you know. It's, it's about the it marketing. What the sport is about to be the best. Ah, uh, so unfortunately, right? It's not just about being the best, right? It's also about it's selling the tickets. Yeah, it's also about the business. Yeah, so it's 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 it's, it's a balance of the two, right? But how do you? We, how do you build yourself a name? How do you build yourself that big if you don't get the opportunity? It's about marketing yourself. Look, look at the UFC, for example. The UFC mm. is building like certain superstars, right? Look at the likes of Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley was ranked number 11 and he was made to fight Peter Yan. Peter Yan was number one, right? A lot of people were not happy about how he skipped the line. But, you know, Sean yeah. O'Malley built himself to become this, you know, larger than life star, right? And he was given that privilege to be able to, you know, be on the fast track. Look at Conor McGregor. A lot of people would not agree with the fast tracking of Conor McGregor as well, right? But then he's a big star, right? So, like, when you are a big star, you get, you know, bigger paydays than people who would yeah, probably sure. perform better than you. So I think the sport is like a balance of performance and marketability, which is business. You know, yeah. in the, at the end of the day, it's not just a sport, it's a business. They want people who are able to bring people into the arena, right? And, you know, That's put true. seats That's on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put bots on the I seats. <laughs> right? <laughs> But still, but still, if you think of it in that way, it's funny how life works. Because you, yeah, you back in the day, you did it for being the champion, being mm-hmm. the best. Mm-hmm. And that that days, it wasn't about you selling the tickets. Now, you, it, now your name has to sell the tickets before you get the opportunity. Exactly, exactly. So it's it's like both ways, right? So if you know you've got the performance, then you have to build that personality and. It's 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 crazy how some people now start to act out of character, just to build that personality. Look at Kobe Covington in the UFC, for example. Yeah, Kobe. Co- yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Like I know Kobe exactly just had to create a different personality. 
<laughs> he lost his last fight. Yeah, he lost his last fight to Leon. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and of course, I think that is what Mirab, Mirab Duvalishvili is also doing. Mirab stalking. Right? That's a big thing. <laughs> But too much talking, it gets a lot of attention. A lot of guys, a lot of guys wants to. They they think they can talk their opponent, uh, their opponent scared. It doesn't work like that. Mm, because like you, you, the 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 mentality of a fighter is different, right? Mm. Yeah. Like talk talk will not scare me as a fighter. Yeah, the thing is, is some guys will probably fall for it. Some guys won't, but. Luckily, I'm not that guy shouting on the stage. Yeah, I'll kill you. Yeah, this and whatever, you know. And uh, I'm going to say one thing about the fighters out there uh, at BKFC, even, even probably UFC, everything is... There's some of them that's on weigh-in day and stuff like that, or when they've got like face-offs and stuff, then they want to grab each other. But then you get a lot of them that's got so much respect for each other that they just have a normal, respectful face-off mm-hmm. or way in, and then they go, and that, that I appreciate more than the guy that wants to, you know, try and steal a show by grabbing the other guy by his throat, and that's not necessary. You're going to do it tomorrow night in any case. Why do you want to do it now? Oh, you, you reminded me of uh, something that happened in the UFC recently. That is Manuel Cap versus... Uh, Mohamed Mokayev, you know, in the build up to the fight, there was a lot of, you know, attacks in, you know, public spaces, even in, in the face of, they had to have like about 50 security men, you know, <laughs> in the cage. But when it came to the time of the fight, they, it was a boring fight. They couldn't even, they, they, they were just gauging themselves. Oh, they were just gauging themselves. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're which fight you're talking about. I remember it, it, that. It is crazy. Like, even in the cage, they had to have, you know, about 50 security holding them back. You know, the other guy attacked, uh, Mokhaev attacked Manuel Cap, you know, in the hallway at the UFCPI. But when, it, when you guys are now locked in the cage, you're hesitating to attack. Right, it's it, it just yeah. it's uh, I don't know I don't I don't know the word to use for it, but I don't want to use a negative word, but it's not something that is desirable to see, you know, yeah. to see people no, talking the talk and not walking the talk, right? So if you talk, talk a big but, game, talk, no action. yeah, if you talk a big game, you have to deliver it. <laughs> you have to deliver it. Exactly. I am, te- I am telling you. I am telling you. Wow. Mm. Interesting. So uh, let's see. Towards the end of the port, right, we usually have like a question from the previous guest yeah. that you would answer and you would ask the next guest, right, you know, a question. So mm-hmm. I think the question from a previous guest is like, what are you doing? to make the lives of those around you better in this year. So what is it, what is it that you're doing to make the lives of the people around you um, better this year? To be, to be involved, and then I've got a word for that, is make every second so beautiful so it lasts forever. So never always always look at the at, at the good things out there and look at people at the good in people instead of the bad hmm. look yeah. at the good in people instead of the bad wow you just reminded me you know b- before i jumped on the podcast with you i was listening to joel austin right i don't know if you know him he's a pastor right so i like to listen to him every morning and then he he talks about you know positive energy he talks about you know forgiveness right it talks about treating people good even when they don't treat you right right and then he he was talking about something about being an example without even knowing it right Mm -hmm. that is when you treat people good you are an example even without knowing it so he he talked about the story of esau and jacob right you know jacob robbed esau of his birthrights right however esau did forgive jacob yes right yeah but you you know the interesting thing you know jacob is the father of joseph 
right? And Joseph and the brothers saw that Esau, their uncle, did forgive Jacob. Now look at the generation, you know, uh, going forward. Joseph's brothers, right, sold him into slavery. But Joseph became a leader, right, in Egypt, and the brothers now had to come, you know, seek for help. But what did Joseph uh -huh. do? He forgave his brothers. He forgave his brothers. The course of the example of Esau, the uncle, that forgave their father. <laughs> you know, it was, you know, this generational thing. And for me, I see, I see that in you as well, right? Like you being a spiritual man, you being a religious man, you are beginning to set an example for people, even without you knowing it. That's true. That's true. I, I hear what you say. The thing mm. is, you don't see it. You don't, you see, don't it. see it. Other you people see it, it, but you don't see it. Mm. That's that's the type of vibe and the type of uh, energy you bring to people without knowing. Mm. Yeah. People don't remember what you do, but people remember how you made them feel. Yeah. Hmm. So you meet some people, they might not even remember your name, but they always remember how you make them feel. <laughs> exactly. They'll, they'll, because they'll, of the they'll, energy. They'll talk, to you, they'll talk to you about, like, do you remember that guy that fought that day? He was, uh, I can't remember his name. It sounds like me, but... <laughs> <laughs> remember the name, the farmer. <laughs> and that's why, that's why I like this guy, Bilal Mohammed in the UFC. You know, his nickname is Remember the Name. And then remember he just the talk, remember the name. <laughs> Do you get it? You have to remember the name. <laughs> I like, I like, I like that. Great. Oh wow! So, so what question would you like to, to leave? Give you, a question. you need to give me um, a question, right? Okay. You, yeah, you know, no, you I have didn't. to leave. You have to leave a question for the next guest, right? So, do you want to leave two questions? Do you want to leave a question for me, and the next guest, or how do you want to do it? Uh, for the next guest, let's leave a question for the next case. Yes. Hmm. So what question uh, do you want to leave? Um, I've got it on, on, the, on my tongue, but I can't release now. Let me think quickly. I was thinking about how I'm going to ask it. Um, you know, the easy question is... is that changed his life in doing the sport he does. If it's a sports person, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. What 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 changed his life in doing what he loves, hmm. and why did he do it? Hmm. What changed your life doing what you love, and why do you do it? Yeah. Right. Hmm. Not just, it's that. not always just about the love. It's, yeah, I'm not allowed to give the answer. <laughs> Whoa! I am not the next guest. I am the host to the next <laughs> guest. <laughs> so the next guest has got their work cut out for them. Wow! That 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 yeah. is a very 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 deep one. Wow! Let's see. <laughs> good. Let's see what happens with that one. Let's see what happens with that one. But of course, you know, for me, I am very very big on gratitude. I like to say an attitude of gratitude, right, uh -huh. is a good attitude. So for me, uh -huh. for sure, in the spirit of gratitude, thank you very much, you know, for spending thank your you, time, Sarah. you know, I appreciate spending you one guys. hour of your time. You know, if you know you spend your time with a person, it means you're spending your life with a person. You know, life is yeah. measured in time. And of course, you know, thank you for your thank time. You thank you for sharing your life with us. You know, it is very, very much appreciated. God bless you, my brother. And of Thank course, you, you know, so I wish to see you at the top. You know, great things for you. Amen. Great things for your fighting career. Great things for the farm as well. There we go. Let's make things happen. <laughs> oh, wow. Fantastic. Thanks, sir. I appreciate you having me here. And uh, yeah, it was great talking to you. And then uh, we'll chat around. Definitely keep updating. Yeah, all good. Ah, there's a 45, 44 going down. 
coming. It's the big countdown. 